All right. Hello and welcome, everyone. So today we have a brand new war room to talk about. We get to talk about Citrine. So, spoilers, Citrine is quite good. And also the game mode that she comes from, I think, is also quite good, which is great. I mean, I think that she is just a really solid Warframe, barring one particular detail. So, if we look at what Strain's got, you can see that I have already started considerably building her. She has a helmet, and so on and so forth, and her build looks like this. This is a very high investment build. Of course, it's 5 Forma. It's got, you know, multiple Archon shards on it, one of which being a Tau, full augments, all of the business. And uh, I have pillaged some suit. So, here's the thing. This is like max investment in what Citrine is capable of. Uh, and you absolutely do not need to do this, but I was having such a good time I decided to anyway. Uh, what this build is... This is a max pillage build that still does the rest of the things that Citrine does well. So, with the 268% strength and Molt Augmented, which gives me another 60% whenever it's at max stacks, plus Corrosive Projection, whenever Molt Augmented is all the way stacked up at 328% strength, it combined with Corrosive Projection gives me instant armor strip for basically everything that I can see on the map, which is really, really good or killing lots of things, of course. This is replacing her, I think, underwhelming ability of Prismatic Gem. Prismatic Gem is an interesting ability that we're going to talk about after I explain the rest of Citrine's build, uh, but I don't feel like it's very functional, which we'll get into. The rest of Citrine's build, besides like going all into Pillage here, is Fractured Blast, which gives us a 134 percent chance for a health orb to drop from any enemy that we hit with fractured blast which is quite good because you also get a 20 meter range uh which is super solid with only just stretch being in here and we also get a 53 percent chance for an energy orb to drop from any enemy we hit with her one as well so for our energy economy we're using equilibrium which can turn those health orbs into more energy uh giving us a really fantastic energy economy when combined with primed flow so we have 510 total possible energy uh, and pretty much any time we cast Fractured Blast, we're going to go straight to that, which allows us to then use Blind Rage. Uh, also worth noting, there's currently a bug right now. If you're using Xenric, it shows all zeros for energy costs. Her energy costs at base are 25, 50, 75, uh, and then 100 for her regular abilities. So keep that in mind. Uh, but we're on 45% efficiency with Blind Rage because this ability is so good when combined with Equilibrium, Primed Flow, and of course the Modus Mod. Uh, on your Kavat of choice, so or Panzerfaust, or, you, whenever your pet has the ability to make it so you can pick up health orbs anyway. Variety of ways to do it. Uh, but that allows us to pick up those energy or those health orbs as energy orbs, which is extremely, extremely good and just makes our energy economy great, allowing us to build way weirder than we would otherwise be able to. Uh, her two is a phenomenal and interesting ability. That gives us damage reduction whenever we start it up and gives us more damage reduction up to a cap of 90% every time we get a kill and get, and we get half of that whenever we get an assist. Any enemy that we hit with our one will count as an assist or otherwise to do damage to. So pretty much always this is going to be at 90% damage reduction. I have enough strength, which the base I think is 225 for this to start at 90%, but it will drain over time if you are not killing enemies or getting assists. So you do need to be active in keeping up this 90% damage reduction. 90% damage reduction is quite nice and combines very well with another 90% damage reduction from adaptation. So we have a very large amount of survivability that added with the pillage shields will give us with just pillage survivability about 160,000 EHP just from the shields whenever we go to max over shields, which is very strong. And because her energy economy is good and I don't feel like you need to run energize, I've got arcane blessing, which gives me another like 1200 HP. Uh, alongside her, honestly, weirdly good amount of armor that she starts with. It must be the gems. Uh, and that gives us just a colossal amount of EHP that enemies are going to have to burn through in order to try and kill us. And that's without mentioning her passive, which is going to give us pretty much always 25 health per second. So she's very hard to kill. And if that weren't enough, 
this 90% damage reduction or whatever damage reduction you happen to be at is given to all allies in affinity range. So she is an excellent support and her passive of the 25 health a second healing, which of course starts at five and then builds up over time as you pick up health orbs, uh, is also given to all allies in affinity range. So in terms of support, she is supporting as long as she is relatively near her teammates, which is great uh, and just works extremely, extremely well and allows her to do her thing while also being extremely helpful just by being in the vicinity and doing the things she wants to do anyway, which is phenomenal. On top of that, we have Crystallize. So Crystallize basically targets enemies in a cone in front of you and sends like crystal growths out to hit them and crowd control them if applicable. Obviously, it won't crowd control enemies that are uh, not crowd controllable, but it will put crystals on them that will then, when you shoot them, give you 300% critical chance flat, which is extremely powerful, and it will also do a small amount of damage. The small amount of damage is mostly just nice because it will count as assists whenever like allies kill those enemies and will make sure you keep your preserving shell up. Uh, but this ability, while a little slow to cast, is very powerful and acts a lot like Korra's ensnare ability. Uh, but for multiple targets, which means you can use this on Demolis, you can use this on Acolytes, there's a ton of enemies this applies to and is very, very powerful, because it's basically cores and snare, but much more expensive, but it is giving you that 300% critical chance, allowing you to take down targets very, very fast, and that 300% critical chance combined with fully stripping uh, armor from enemies means that basically nothing is going to survive the combination of those two things, which is why I've decided to go with Pillage over a lot of the other subsume options that she has. Uh, the other subsume options she has being basically anything. You could go Gloom, Roar, like, it's just literally anything. She has so much room in her build because the, the strength that you need to get her going is not very much. Because even if you don't start at 90% damage reduction... All you need to do is kill enemies or play the game in order to get to 90% damage reduction. So you can have like reasonable power levels at like 150% strength or whatever, or like, you know, just even like 130, you'd probably be mostly fine though. You'd want to go a bit above that. As long as you have some amount of strength, you can get to that really nice 90% damage reduction just by killing enemies and having a decent amount of like duration to get there, of course which this ability has a nice baseline anyway, as you can see we're at 179% duration, um, which is great here, but you don't need that much for this to be comfortable as this is a really nice 44 seconds with this much, and even at baseline is really solid. And overall, basic the basic way that this works is that your one is your energy economy, and it can also kill low level enemies very easily because it does always proc slash and will do like a reasonable amount of damage. Uh, your two is just like constant protection for yourself and your allies, which is great. Uh, and then Crystallize is your big heavy hitter for large targets, putting this on Eximus that need to go and like killing Acolytes and doing what have you in terms of high value targets. It's really just excellent and very hard to stop. So to show that off, uh, we're just going to jump in uh, and kill some dudes. These are just, you know, our usual level 190s, but I just want to show off what this looks like. Uh, her two casting looks like this, starting at like 90%. You can see her special UI in the bottom will display uh, her percentage of like DR that she's getting and also the health per second that she is getting. Uh, as you can see, if we grab these health orbs, oh, it should, oh does it not update from these? Well, you, you've got to grab health orbs in order to like boost this up basically. Uh, and it will like go higher as you go, which you can see if we open up the abilities menu, you can see here. Uh, pick up a health orb to increase your generation by 0.1 up to a maximum of 25 health a second. Uh, but yeah, apparently these ones don't do it for whatever reason, but she generates health orbs from her one constantly, so it's very usual that she's going to have everything that she needs. Uh, so yeah, we'll recast this, which does allow us to bump it back up to whatever our base is. Uh, also, if your number is currently higher, so if your base is like 40 and you are at like 70-ish like I am now, recasting before the timer ends will keep you at whatever number is higher, which is also excellent and a really nice quality of life thing that allows Citrine to be built in a lot of different ways. Anyway, uh, killing these guys. Your four is a slam down. He goes out and grabs all these dudes. You did three to, you know, get rid of some defenses and just fire away. Uh, it's worth noting that AoEs do not hit the crystals, but if you aim directly at the crystals, you can see the considerably large numbers that you get for that. 
Also, in terms of uh, the kind of damage you can expect from her one, uh, we can kill... We'll kill the guys that give them all 90% DR and the Overguard and all that business. Just one cast. All right, we'll give it, like, three, because it's very cheap to throw out there. But yeah, it does, like, honestly pretty solid damage to them, although this is combining with the cat now, which is giving the spores to everyone. But that's also pretty usual. But yeah, it does like, a very respectable amount of damage to like this level of enemy, uh, which is just fantastic. Like just like a few slash procs here and there, like just weaken enemies a little bit. And of course, whenever they die, uh, they will always be giving you uh, health orbs and such, which is just going to immediately be absorbed. You can see like 200 health or 38 energy there. Just whatever energy I'm missing, pretty much if I'm using my one on enemies before killing them, I'm going to get maxed out on energy immediately. And there's also just going to be leftovers on the ground most times. And those orbs are also generated for teammates, so your teammates will probably appreciate the energy orbs being everywhere as well. Though, most times teammates have their energy economy figured out anyway. With all that, uh, Satrine is pretty impressive. She's just a really good support that is, like, fine just doing stuff on her own. The way that I've been describing her uh, after, like, playing her for a while is that she is kind of an anti-social support where she's going to give you 90% DR, 25 health a second, and these enemies, like, well, built this way with pillage, of course, these enemies are not going to have any shields or armor, and stay the fuck away from me. She's going to go do her thing, you will have all these buffs, and they, you do not need to be very near each other for that to happen. You can be pretty separate, and everything is going to be supported and nice and great, and she doesn't have to hang out with you. That is really, like, the way that she plays, because... A lot of the time, especially in the Steel Path, uh, especially in her new game mode, which is pretty movement heavy, uh, I am still in affinity range of usually most of my teammates, if not all, and I'm just killing the Acolyte with the combination of her four plus pillage, uh, and it's just not even a problem. Teammates don't need to be there, but they are still like receiving the benefit of her being in the squad, which is just really nice. Uh, also worth noting with the style of what she provides, which is just a really nice chunk of DR for the whole team, basically, and also energy orbs and such on the ground. Uh, Wisp is a huge fan of having her in the party, so if you are a Wisp player, you're probably going to really like to have Citrine around, because the one thing Wisp doesn't give out is damage reduction, and a lot of Wisps run Adaptation. If a Citrine is in your party as a Wisp and you're running Adaptation, that means you instead get 99% damage reduction instead of 90, which makes Wisp pretty much untouchable, and the health bonus that you're going to be giving Citrine is going to make her pretty much untouchable because with the Blessing Arcane, you can see I'm at 1,600 HP here, but plus Wisp health, that's like 3k HP and is pretty much untouchable when those two frames are together. So they work together very well. So if you've got a constant fight over who's going to play Wisp in your friend group, Maybe one of you should pick up Citrine, and then you can both have a fantastic time, because they have very similar build freedom, and they love hanging out. With that, let's talk about her three and why I replaced it. So her three, and I'm just going to throw some, like, duration and such on here so it, it hangs out for a little while, and also we'll get some range. There we go, just some range and all that good business. We'll just throw streamline, I suppose. There you go. Just some basic stuff just to show this ability off. So her three is Prismatic Gem. So the way that this ability works uh, is you set out a gem. The gem targets enemies that are taking weapon damage from Citrine and her allies. It also works with her one and also her four as far as I can tell. Uh, but it does specify weapon damage on the ability for some reason. Uh, its beams inflict heat, cold, toxin, and electricity status effects. Status chance and status duration increase for nearby allies. So... This ability screams from the heavens to me that it was nerfed to shit at some point during Citrine's development. And before we get into the discussion about Prismatic Gem, I think Citrine is good enough that we could just ignore that she even has Prismatic Gem as an ability and just like move on. DE, don't change her at all. She can just be like Protea where we get rid of Protea's four and move on. And we can just get rid of Citrine's three and subsume over it and move on. And that's fine, because I think Citrine is really fun as she stands right now. But this ability is not only slow to cast, has a pretty restrictive AoE starting at 15 meters. You can see 
it's reasonable-ish here. But also, whenever you apply uh, this effect on enemies, we can throw a closer one. It has soft line of sight, and it applies one at a time to enemies. Oh, sometimes, sometimes two. But it applies very, very slowly to the enemies. It does not just give you the statuses. It does apply all of our basic statuses, toxin, electricity, heat, uh, and cold, all at once. But it applies it very slowly, and the damage isn't great. So you're really better off shooting enemies. And while this could be, you know, like a condition overload effect primer, because it is four statuses all in one whenever you shoot an enemy in the AoE, it is kind of simply just not effective enough. And the additional status duration doesn't really matter because status duration as a stat is kind of whatever. And the status chance that this ability offers, as you can see here, while affected by strength and everything, this 125% as, as seen um, with me at 125% strength, that 125 is additive with effects like the dual stat mod. So this 60-60, that 120 that is on Citrine's ability is pretty much equivalent currently to the two 60% that I have just on this gun. So that's basically equivalent to generously saying one low effect mod because these status chances is like not as good as having a elemental plus a status chance. Um, so the effect of that in terms of status is not particularly good because it's not like an additive to base to turn any high fire rate weapon into basically kind of a phantasma like, uh, but it's instead just kind of a all right ish mod and the status duration is not something we've ever really decided to mod for, uh, and is, you know, a stat they give us sometimes that usually just doesn't really matter. As I said, so overall, it's a slow casting ability that requires you to build quite a bit of range because its range isn't very good. Its damage output is not particularly good unless you're already armor stripping all the enemies, but that's the ability that I put over this one. Uh, and the status chance and status duration are kind of non-stats that it's adding, so the only thing that it could really do is be a thing that sets you up for condition overload stuff. But if you were doing that, you'd be much better served at just equipping a secondary that does that, like the Epitaph, for example and then getting a full armor or shield strip in this slot instead. Uh, so yeah, Prismatic Gem, it's cool, it looks neat. I love the Aurora Borealis at this particular time in this mission in this part of the galaxy, uh, but just not particularly effective, and I much prefer uh, to replace it with Pillage and go for this build. Now, important information about this build. It also uses two shards and they are required to run this build this way if you want all of the particular effects of this build you need one tau forged crimson shard for strength and one regular shard for strength this equals 25 25 is an important number because we are at exactly 268 percent strength 268 percent plus 60 from molt augmented gets us to exactly 328 percent which on pillage will get us to 82% drain. Combine that with the 18% from corrosive projection, and that gives us 100% from 82. So armor is immediately stripped the moment you max out your molt augmented in one cast from pillage, which is supremely important. If you do it the other way, you need to replace auger message. And what you will do is you will instead use auger secrets and then throw in one of the regular red shards on strength after that if you only have a bunch of regular shards though of course with the new pity system eventually you'll get a tau if you want to use that on citrine she appreciates it of course um i would suggest two red shards for duration to bump up that duration a little bit uh you can of course add like whatever amount more strength you want or other stuff uh but the basic gist is that the tau forge is going to save you a slot in terms of what you can put in here and for me personally once i have access to the shards that i want here uh, i'm very likely doing these two strength shards and then doing three yellow shards probably one casting speed two parkour speed for me personally but she wants duration she could like more strength wouldn't be bad gets you closer to like that max pillage strip sooner on sooner on in the mission uh and that's perfectly fine 
Uh, it is worth noting that if you get like the 45% here and then the extra five on this, that is 50%. So it means that Molt Augmented has to build up very, very little in order for you to hit 328. But you can't quite get to the point where you can just use all strength shards and then replace that uh, arcane because the arcane does give you just enough to get to the point where uh, pillage does the full strip by itself. Uh, and you can't get that much more out of this. But yeah, that's like the way that this works here. Uh, and yeah, it just allows your build to be able to use Augur Message here and is just a bit more efficient if you have one Tau Shard and gives you kind of more freedom in terms of what uh, to taste shards you can throw in here um, because you have one additional slot by getting one Tau Forged on here. And that single percent in her case, and also Zaku's case for that matter, which we'll have a video on soon, uh, actually matters because that instant strip is much more important than it seems because that 1% armor at really high levels, especially in the steel path, can really be a gigantic pain. But yeah, that's uh, what's up with Citrine. Uh, we're gonna just, I'll probably just like throw in some of the steel path uh, footage of the new game mode with her. Uh, the new game mode is really cool, super fun. You're gonna watch me just dunk on some acolytes. It is in a party setting, but honestly, that's probably not a bad thing. Uh, so yeah, if you want to see some cool Citrine stuff, I'll have that here at the end, but that's just going to be from stream earlier. Uh, and also I played a ton of that new game mode and went over all that stuff. Uh, some cliff notes because I'm going to be gone this weekend about some of the other new items. Uh, the Korufel, this weapon's really cool, but I think that it's a weapon that is going to be probably like a staple meta weapon down the line in a few years when it gets a prime right now. It's a really cool weapon that is reasonably effective. Uh, and her little shotgun thing that came with her, uh, this, do, 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 the Steflos, uh, this thing is terrible, just awful, just absolutely, just nothing, just nothing to do here, uh, absolute garbage, but the Korofel is really cool, uh, whenever we get a prime of this, I think it's possible that it enters into, like, the, you know, kind of echelon of, like, a Redeemer Prime or a Glaive Prime, uh, but right now it sits like kind of in the area like regular glaive sits where it's good and cool, but not really hitting into those upper ranks where all of the stuff we would, you know, use kind of end game style, if you would, would be. But yeah, Citrine's dope. Uh, I think really great release overall. Uh, just good stuff pretty much all around. And uh, I'm very happy with the update. So yeah, anyway, enjoy the gameplay from earlier. Uh, and thank you for watching. Much appreciated. I hope you enjoyed the video. Yes, the train school is fucked. Yeah, like, man, people were complaining about, like, her cast times, but, like, as long as you get rid of her three, her casts really, like, she can move during them, so, like, just do that, forehead. Right? Her three is some real doo-doo dog shit, huh? Yeah, it's real bad. Like I said, though, like I said, though, it has, like, all, it has all of, like, the markers of, like, this ability was really fucked up at one point, wasn't it? Tell me on this hot piece that you must see. Well, as long as you ignore her three, uh, her two is 90% DR for you and your entire team, as long as you play the video game. Uh, her one generates a ton of health and energy orbs, and because it generates health orbs, it means equilibrium is your energy economy. Her four is a uh, Korra's two-like stun on a large amount of enemies that gives you 300% critical chance for you and your squad, as long as you shoot the gems that you create on enemies. Whenever you do this. See this? Like, you're like this. And you shoot them. Uh, so it gives you a bunch of crit. And also that works on like Acolytes and also Demolis and you can put the crystals on to uh, like the Eximus and all that business. And also her one, in addition to like the generating orbs and stuff, kills low level enemies with slash procs. Violence, hold on.
Let me illustrate. She does that. Also, uh, she gives 25 uh, health regen per second to the entire team if you play the game. Also, also she do got the booty. She kind of got the booty. Play the game, pass. <laughs> Balance is the one that just kills frame abilities now? Correct. However, he can't kill your frame abilities from within the crystal. But if you turn it this way, it can show you your death. <laughs> Chris, one second, I will allow that message through there you go <clears throat> play the game why do you think i'm so happy to play zaku it's extreme walking sim time that's fair zaku's very good the tree on infestation tiles is literally biological war crimes that sounds correct Actual top post is Tyler Regor's fault. God damn it. So is she broken or totally broken? Neither. I think that she's just really good. She's Wisp tier. Like, she's, like, right up there with Wisp, except for, like, the way that she buffs is much more, like, passive. Like, your teammates don't have to pick this up. The things that she gives to her team happen at affinity range which for those of you that don't remember is like 50 meters like the way that i have described her is that she is the anti-social support like she's out here doing her own thing and you get 90 percent dr and you get 25 health a second shut up stay away from me Like, don't ask me for shit, Citrine. Like a better hero? Correct. <clears throat> I'll help, but from over here. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Citrine seeing the Acolyte Shadows. A new victim. <laughs> Where'd you go? Where'd they go again? Huh? Oh. I gemmed them while they were water. Well, that's okay. You're dead now. <clears throat> Why are you running? Yeah, none of the acolytes will even look at Citrine. They're like, if I just ignore it, it can't see me.
was two years a big upgrade when you first started it's when you push her up from your beer so i mean are you seeing what i'm doing because like i don't know that she's gonna be quite like actually wisp tier because like part of what wisp provides is speed which is one of the things that she doesn't really have <clears throat> But, like, in terms of, like, the strength of, like, what she applies in missions, it's pretty up there. The one thing that does make it harder is she is a weapon-dependent frame. Like, you're gonna need a gun. Because, like, the things that she does are very much, like, like, with her four in particular, like, if you don't have a gun to go with her, she's gonna be considerably weaker. Oh, yeah, she loves being with Wisp. <clears throat> If Zatrine and Whisper in the same room, there are not enemies in that room. It's gonna be OP in Railjack with affinity range and it being able to affect Arcwing. Uh, <clears throat> that doesn't sound OP at all. You wanna be in Arcwing for like the, the most limited amount of time possible. So like, the 90% DR is, like, kind of nice, I guess. Uh, but the health regen doesn't really matter. There's also a lot of booty in that room. That's true. Yeah, honestly, as much as I would like her 3 to be good, my advice to DE is to change nothing. <clears throat> like, same thing as Protea. Like, you got enough of this right, you can move on. There's, you don't need to change anything. Yeah, she keeps the helmet slot. <laughs> Do work on objectives, do we still need Gara for that? It's hard to tell. Because you don't put it on objectives, it's hard to know. way to test the steel path excavation and see if the drill gets instant deleted or not and that's fair <clears throat> she's an invincible weapon platform crit god energy and healing machine so a tier in all likelihood uh, da, 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 da. where's my lunch money hello lunch money oh that i went too far i think oh no i got him thank you And much like how the Acolytes uh, interact with Revenant, like, she really just brings whatever Acolyte happens to be unfortunate enough to spawn into a mission with her just into just an anime. Like, she's just, she's just giving these fucking Acolytes just the fucking, um, what the hell is it called? 
The fuck is the Naruto thing where you just die forever and can't move? What the hell is that thing? Is it something something Sharingan? Something. You guys, you someone knows what that is in chat. What do you know? There you go, the Sukiyomi. There it is. That's that, yeah, that thing. Just put him in a gem and just kill that bitch. Just kill him. And it's really crazy. Whenever you make crowd control that works on enemies and also gives you a Are damage you buff, it's good. That's crazy. Visitors. Yes, thank you for the raid. Much appreciate it. Well, come on in, everybody from Gaz's stream. Spaghettification, yes. Is we've already talked about it, but red text horny on main threw me for a loop. Yeah, I was not expecting that, but now it means that I get to say Jamusi, and that's like cursed and also funny. Hey, that's pretty good. From that new frame. Yes, the great. Guys, have you found anything to do with her three? Because her three just seems like trash. I got rid of it pretty, pretty fast. Hey, that's pretty good. Looking forward to getting home from work to try this Four new girl out. Prime, star chart, and decent damage when they're armor stripped. Yeah. I don't know. It just feels like it has so many restrictions for that. Like, it's soft line of sight. It's very slow on, like, an enemy-to-enemy -enemy basis. the arcanes yet i do not have sets of them but it's the grind for her not bad it's just this mission and like you can either get like parts for her to drop and make the grind much like faster or it'll take like between five and seven hours if you're really unlucky <clears throat> i playing her with no helmet mostly i put pillage on her and it is super cracked like for her like her just being like a weapons platform and just getting like the full armor strip because like i'm on 328 strength with gross projection uh and like still like having no energy issues just using her one for energy and everything else so like i can just immediately strip armor Thanks. Spawn up here. Thank you. Hey, gangs behind the shed. It's kind of a rough stream today. So many players upset about the session CLS and changes. Oh yeah, I mean, I think it's unfortunate <clears throat> for the like relic pack stuff. Do we know like the actual like reason? Because they they said like because of like exploiting or whatever, or just like I don't know if we know the reason. It seemed like a lot of people think the reason is because there's some like steel path like currency exploit for farming it. Yeah, the patch notes were kind of vague where it's like you can't just redeem like a bajillion or whatever. Which like kind of undersells how long you have to farm Steel Essence because like it still is a farm. 
It just means you've played for a bajillion, right? <clears throat> yeah, but I get it. At least 25. I, th I feel like 25 is maybe low. I'd really appreciate 50. 50 would be really nice. Was this your lessons change? You can only buy 25 packs of um, relics from Teshin each week now. Pack thing is 100% a prime access sales booster. <sighs> I don't know. I feel like the numbers on like the amount of players that are doing that, that would have bought the prime access anyway, is like really low. That affect other rep systems as well? No. The other rep systems did not receive changes, as I am aware. <clears throat> what if I pack doesn't guarantee a full set? I mean, sure. Neither does 50. But yeah, I think like more likely than not. <clears throat> Cause like, I don't think that there's like, okay. So if you're someone who's playing Warframe enough to pre farm the prime access and like spend like 2,500 steel essence to get like a bazillion packs right at launch so that you can trade and make platinum or like, cause that's like the only reason to do that. It's not to get the PA. Right? Getting the PA is like not hard anyway if you're just gonna like farm it and build it. Like that's not that's already not hard. Like the thing you're trying to do is make a ton of platinum by getting a bunch of sets super super fast and being the first in the market to sell them. Like that's the only reason to farm that many sets. So like if you're someone that's doing that, you're not gonna buy the fucking prime access. Like, right? Like why the fuck would you do that anyway? Because you're trying to earn a bunch of platinum. And if, like, you were going to buy the Prime Access, you could just buy the platinum because you get it with the Prime Access. Right? I thought you dodged. You didn't. Bye, Mania. It's nice that the gem seems nice and hardy. Hey, Zyme, are any of the current structure decks on Master Duel worth picking up? The Salaman Great One. The Salaman Great One is the best one. It is the best one to start with. It's not close. Salads are a very powerful archetype. You pick that up, you craft some hand traps, and you can get the diamond no problem at all. Like, with no issues. It will not take very long. Do you play Yu-Gi-Oh? Yeah, I play a shitload of Yu-Gi-Oh. I'm in diamond right now in Master Duel. <laughs> well, I'm not playing fucking Sprite, though. I'm waiting until Verna Sylphs to switch decks. I'm just playing math right now in Runic. <clears throat> That's probably Runic gamers are cooking in Master Duel now, though. Yeah, I don't know. I just, I like, I'm not going to play Sprite. Because I, I know that Sprite is just going to get, like, torn apart by bands anyway, because it's of what it does. And, like, so there's no reason for me to, like, make it. 
Um, and also the art does not appeal to me. Like the sprite art is like very mid. Yeah, kills don't matter at all for this. There's some speculation that kills make it so that the orbs spawn faster. Which is more rewards, but like... Those are good amounts. All right. Hello, everybody. Sorry things have been a little slow, but I have been learning a new editor, as I'm sure you're probably aware from the beginning of this video. Uh, but let's get started. Thanks to all of my $10 patrons, Brutus Salazar, Dylan Dworsky, Ethrain, Jacob Bean, James Harsthorn, uh, JC for Science, Jefferson Clark, Joshua Adams, Lou Xanth, Malik X Williams, Metro Zanka, Minty Ginja, Mitch Stuff, Nicholas Gridley, Paradise, uh, Shan Hardine, Zach Zayner, and Zerafir. And thank you very much to all of the rest of my patrons as well. It is much appreciated for the support, especially as I'm, you know, learning some new editing stuff to try and get better and have the videos be higher quality and so on and so forth. Uh, but yeah, that's gonna do it for the video. Uh, expect some weird things to be happening this month, I suppose. Like, you know, or weird editing shenanigans in all likelihood. But yeah, thanks everybody.